And now we should be live. Okay, starting right now. Let's just see when we're up. Yeah, it seems it's starting out. Hello, everyone. If there's anyone, no, there's nobody. <laughs> okay. Starting it a bit at the last minute. Uh, I had an appointment with uh, my future accountant. So I took care of this. And now we're ready to do some game art. Starting with a bit of Affinity Designer. So let me explain what we're going to do today. I'll grab Emacs. Uh, close this window. Start. Uh, the, the start of the stream is going to be in Affinity Designer real quick. Um, I just have to design some... To block in some characters, some elements for the game movement demo we worked on last time. So I've worked a bit more on it. Let me uh, open Godot. Godot Beta. And it's not going to be Dan the Rabbit this time. I have to import the new project. So I need to do a thing or, or two with this. Uh, this is Godot, course examples, character controller, final. There we are. So this is just the example from last time, boiled down to just the movement. The, the code has been simplified a lot. The character can still fall, it can still run, jump, and bump into walls. Um, but now it's time to produce some um, uh, prototype only graphics for the rabbit, for the uh, elements you can interact with to block out the proportions of the game. Another thing I want to do is um, show people who follow the tutorials and the course that you are supposed to work with this type of blocked in graphics. So not even what you see here, but uh, graphics that are Crap, I clicked on something. Graphics that just block out the proportions. So we're going to do this. We already have the character's proportions here. Um, and it's going to be very simple, very short. Let me show you. I'll just grab... So either you can use a pure square like this. I should change the color, but aside from that, a colored rectangle is perfect. Um, but I'll just round it out to make it look a little more appealing. That's about it. 25% corner radius. I think that's even the default in uh, Designer. And let me see. I can't use the keyboard to zoom in. Because, for example, the ears on the rabbit are purely cosmetic. So you don't really want to have them be in the way. So we're going to use two colors as well to make the character pop a little bit. Uh, for the hero, I used to do this. I used to make them blue, uh, playable characters, and orange for the enemies. Don't ask me why, there's no particular reason. Let's remove the pressure as well. Um, I don't want a pressure curve, and four pixels should be enough. Okay. So now let's find some good colors so the character pops a little bit. One thing I want to show with these prototype graphics is that the character is thin. Uh, thinner than the sprites, the final sprite suggests actually. So its body is very thin, its head, its head may be very big but it's more of a stick actually. Uh, especially when it comes to the collision box, it's very, very, very thin, very narrow. Does it look good? Mm, the color is not exceptional. Let's see what we can have. So I'm using uh, Google's material colors as well. Very efficient. For the enemy, this will be good, I think. Uh, orange. Okay, and uh, for the character, maybe we can use some green. Nope. Uh, I guess for the body. 
Okay, pretty bright, pretty dark. All right, and for the character, it'll be good. So for an enemy human-like uh, character, we'll also have the porcupine like this. The, the point is really to show that when you have these graphics, the gameplay should still should already be enjoyable. And I see there are a few persons. Thanks for joining. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. I, I guess one that's going to come back is what is this program? <laughs> so we're going to do a bit of Affinity Designer to start with because it's vector. It's convenient to export, and then I'll jump back to Krita. Oh, it seems, how is the video quality, by the way? Can you tell me? Because uh, it says, like, the internet connection is not great here. Let me see. Yeah, it doesn't say much more than that. All right. As long as you can see what's happening, it's decent. There's, sometimes there's a... Uh, a lot of people using the internet in the building and we are in a very, um, how can I say? We have terrible internet connection and all in the area in general. So um, it, it's, a, it's a bit hard at times. I mean, for example, I'm coming, I came to the office just to do this live stream. So um, we could be, we could be live. Um, because at home, for example, I can not stream at all. Uh, doesn't it run on Linux? No, I, Affinity Designer is Windows and Mac only, unfortunately. Honestly, if, if we if we could have a program like this on Linux, that'd be incredible. Uh, that'd be one less reason to stick to Windows. <laughs> Although I must say, I do... I'm not a big, big fan of Windows, but I do like uh, the touch support. I don't use it here, I don't have any touch device, but at home, now I have a touch computer and the multi-touch support and hybrid interactions with the tablet mode and all uh, are pretty good. So, all right, we have our characters. Now we need some kind of rock and um, for the sword, same thing, I'm going to... Uh, just modify the sword a bit. I don't need it for this demo though, though. Um, I think I'll pick the sword from the docks again. That should be good. So this is all right. Uh, we want a gap, which is here, but it's ugly. Um, I can't select... Ah, okay, this is the... Okay, so the base shape has the gradient. We're going to make you... Uh... Yeah, so make you very much visible like that. Maybe it's a bit too strong, a bit darker. Just to signal that this is an interactive element and that the player can fall in it. Um, so you can't really see uh, the, the black part, but yeah, the idea is to suggest a gap. <laughs> Maybe we can have some stroke around it. I wish we could copy uh, another thing that's uh, limiting at the moment. There are some base tools that are still not there. For example, you can't, um, you still can't copy paste the style from one shape to another, be it the layer style, I think you can't copy it, or the uh, fill and stroke and stroke style, maybe some more parameters. Um, for now, it's it's not possible. Okay, so this is a gap. Maybe I shouldn't use the, the style from the characters. Oops, like this. Okay, let's keep it this way. You make you darker, but we'll see how it works. I'm not sure it will work well. Um, another thing I'd like to suggest maybe on the characters so this is going a bit overboard. Yeah, it's, I don't want a uh, stroke style here. Maybe one thing I'd like is go one tin darker here. And let's see, give the character some volume. How about this? Is it gonna be good? So the idea is I'm just designing, again, this has to look like prototype art, 
at the same time, uh, I want to make it just a little bit appealing for people who are going to, to watch the course. So it's not uh, pure programmer art. And so also so that the art represents the volume of the characters. Okay, so now the gap doesn't read at all. How can I suggest it uh, better? For one, I'm going to remove the stroke radius. And yeah, I think uh, almost black should be a bit better. All right. Uh, I recommend for these kinds of tasks, you don't have to use a color palette all the time, but for these types of tasks, it's, uh, it's a big time saver. Okay, so the characters will have some volume. They still do have the shadow. Maybe I have to make a slightly um, different one just for character. So let's make it a bit wider. Uh, it's especially going to be visible when the character jumps. That, that's why it's kind of important. These elements, for example, like the shadow, are part of the gameplay. Uh, what resource do you recommend to get started with Designer? In all honesty, I did not watch any tutorial. Um, I mean, I'm, I've been doing art for... I'm... I'm not really a game artist, you know, I've been doing game design, uh, a bit of programming, and uh, I'm more of a jack of all trades, master of none, as they say. But I've got enough, enough experience with art programs so that I just look for answers to some questions from time to time. But aside from that, I learn on my own. And uh, I've used the F1 key to search the docs, because they have a built-in documentation. Uh, the docs are not extraordinary, I must say. Uh, they're so sometimes they're very, yeah, a bit limited, a bit technical, and uh, lacking some, like most docs, they don't cover any techniques, in a sense. It mostly tells you how the tools work, and that's about it. Um, but, I think they have official tutorials. They have that on their Vimeo cha channel or something, so you can use this. Okay, so if we lower the opacity down, it's cool. Uh, we'll round them out a bit more. Can you give me... Normally it's... Hey, if I select one, I can change the corner radius. Why can't I do this with two shapes? I can do this if I select the shape drawing tool. Okay. Okay, it should be good. Uh, decent at least. The gap doesn't work at all. <laughs> I'm not sure how to do it now. Maybe it needs some kind of shadow, but yeah, this part should be entirely in the shadows. Um, maybe something like this, a second. Uh... Like not, I don't want a gradient for you, but maybe going down a bit darker. Hmm. That doesn't read too well, but okay, let's let's try this. We'll see uh, in the game. Maybe if it feels a bit more like dirt, it'll work a bit better. I'll just add some marks to suggest that this is dirt. Like this. Alright. This is ugly, but... I really want to, to jump on the crater part as soon as possible. Um, yeah, no, it's, this doesn't work well. All right. 
Okay, so we have the base characters. Now, one thing I want to do is uh, represent the direction the character is going in. In the game, and for that, we're going to use... Um, I guess we could use some sprites. Let's see a sprite sheet. Maybe there are only a direction. So although I could draw it with Godot, uh, it's doing it with code is quite inefficient. Well, instead, you can have um, something, uh, mm, something that has a bit more volume. Uh, and that feels a bit more appealing to get in this. Okay, so I'm gonna use reuse similar colors. Uh, maybe. Let's see. I think I'm going to reuse the same style. Scale you down, pull you up. I'm going to use a big triangle shape. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you can pretty, uh, you can see pretty quickly why I'm using Affinity Designer rather than uh, Krita for this part. Uh, it's just a lot faster working with Vector. Okay, I can combine the two of you. Maybe can we apply? Uh huh. Can't apply a stroke to the full shape. Um, do we need a stroke though? The idea is really to help the player and the viewer, more importantly, visualize that the character is going in this or that direction. Um, now doing it this way is a bit more work. Okay, thanks for the answer. What do you think is better for beginners in 2D art? Affinity Designer or Inkscape? Mm. No, if you feel comfortable with one program, there's no reason to switch. So don't worry about um, using Affinity, if you like Inkscape. Uh, for me, there's reasons why I use Affinity over Inkscape. Um, it's much closer to... I've been working with Photoshop for a long time. I moved away from it, but I, f I prefer Affinity Designer. That's about it. Um, what do you think about this style here? Let's try to combine the two. If I do this, then, yeah, we're just going to, no, keep the group. Uh, very thin. Yeah, thinner is a bit better. Let's see if a stroke helps to read it more. Um, I think it should only be an outer stroke and be a bit smaller. Align outside. Yeah, the shape lacks contrast very clearly. Maybe we need to add some uh, one more shape here just for the sake of adding some shadow to multiply. So yeah, the thing with uh, art programs is if you've worked with, um, you'll you're get gotten used to a certain workflow and all, um, it feels more convenient to kind of find if you're going to switch program um, in the case of you know going away from Adobe from Photoshop uh, the idea is that designer can do pretty much most of what I needed to do with Photoshop 
and it does a lot of it, um, I would say, even better. But the workflow is still familiar, and that's, that's quite pleasant. Okay, well, let's keep the arrow this way. The only thing is doing it going up. I think it's going to be a bit of extra work doing this uh, in all directions. 45 degrees is okay, but going up like this, not so okay. <coughs> Yeah, I think for all the arrows are better make them in Krita after that. Let's see. Uh -huh, it's part of the group, it's not going to work. I'm going to need other colors as well. I think this is too too close to the character. It's going to work well with other characters. Doing it this way. Um, but at least not with the yellow one. But I think the, the yellow arrow are quite telling. Maybe it's then the orange character who should be red. Maybe, uh, there's al already a pink one. Uh, blue then. Let's use blue. this like that okay it reads and now the arrows work as well just going to need a down uh, facing arrow let's save as well before it crashes so see one thing that's important is um, I'm still I'm being sloppy uh, you, you don't have to go too crazy with um, prototype art. Uh, brushing over the element quickly. Bits of perspective like that, maybe. Okay, should do the job. Let's see. Yeah does the job. Nothing extraordinary, but for now, it'll work. Okay, so we have our prototype art. Um, let me f export the characters at least. Ah, uh, we don't have any rocks. For the rocks, let's take a base element like this one. I'm going to duplicate you. And you're going to become a rock in a few moments. So let's see. Oh, come on, I don't want a palette. Uh, let's go back to... Um, material.
Ah, inverted shortcuts. Did I get this bug again? Mm hmm. Let's see. Right click, middle click. Okay. Middle click on the tablet is not responding. Okay, it responds again. Good, 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 good. Okay, the gap is fine. Maybe I can do one thing with it. I add small dirt elements around, maybe it'll work a tiny bit better. Suggest that this is on the ground. By the way, you can make, you could make entire games with graphics like these. As you can see, they're extremely fast to produce. Um, so if you feel like it, I'd say don't hesitate. Go ahead and, uh, for example, someone who wants to work more as a developer or game designer. Um, well, if you're a pure developer and have very little experience with um, graphic design, it's going to be hard to produce graphics like these, maybe, to pick the colors and all. But uh, really, uh, someone who wants to work as a game designer, for example, I'd highly recommend using very simple graphics like these. They're very efficient, uh, time efficient, and you can produce appealing games. Like, they can feel like final graphics. Hello, Jill. How are you doing? Okay, so we have our little rock. So for the rock, I'm going to do something like this. Just duplicate it. Um, to have it be more like yeah, two rocks together. And maybe... Do I make it plain darker? Does it work? No. I think I'm gonna keep the color, have the two together, and add some little bit of shadow behind it. So there the shadow will be inside the sprite. So it doesn't cost an extra, um, how do you say, not render call, but yeah. So it doesn't cost uh, more rendering. Okay, and this way, this way we can see the difference between the pit uh, and and the rocks. All right, so we have our graphics. Actually, for the the shirt design, um, I think it's going to be too short because I don't have anything to eat today. But uh, I could almost almost do it um do it on stream because yeah jill was asking um if i still had the uh, not the shirt design sorry the kakemono for godot the um banner we use for events for the godot convention uh for one the the current one is really ugly it has that uh purplish color <laughs> it doesn't look too great and well, we should share the, the design, so if someone wants to 
print it for an event um, on the other side of the world, they can. And yeah, the thing is, um, so I made it initially, but I made it in Photoshop, and now I should really do it in SVG. Um, so everyone can, can open the file in Inkscape, for example, so it's easier to scale, to print at different size sizes, and so we fix this horrible color. Okay, good. Yeah, the thing is, I think I picked the uh, purple from... Don't remember from the nodes um, banner or something like this. I tried to reuse it, and then the problem is while printing it it doesn't work. Um, back to twenty five now. No, 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 don't work too well. Okay, so let's name everything for export. Um, Arrow down, right, uh, arrow down, diagonal, okay, we can call it diagonal down, I guess. So we'll have an arrow diagonal up. Um... Arrow right, uh, side, let's call it side because it's going to be left and right. Arrow uh, down and arrow up. So this is exactly the same principle when you're doing an eight direction game. Uh, always have the elements, you, you handle five sprites, you, you have five sprites and that's enough to handle the eight directions, you, you just flip these three over. Okay, so now we're going to have a monster and shadow monster. Well, it's going to be monster slash shadow and monster slash body, I guess. Much better. Um, character slash NPC. Should the player be blue or green? I don't care. Uh, let's call it the player. Character slash player. Slash body. I think I've refactored the game to, to take all this into account. Let's see. You're going up. You're... Why is it the monster? Ah, I picked the wrong, uh, the wrong layer. Let's grab you. Monster shadow, uh, along with the monster body, we're going to bundle you up together. What's this curve? Okay, this is the rock. Uh, so it's going to be environment slash rock. Uh, Abbott says he uses Affinity Designer with Spine 2D. Yeah, actually, um, Designer has a spine exporter. So th this is quite convenient. <laughs> Um, this is going to be environment, environment slash pit. So when you um, put the a, a path into the name and you produce a slice, when you batch export everything, if you export just this one slice, it's going to use the tail of the, the layer name. Otherwise, it's going to export to these relative paths. So it's going to, if you type monster slash body, it's going to export inside the monster folder and name the file body.png, svg, anything you'd like. So in Godot, you can now use these sprites as svg as well. Uh, and by default, they will be rasterized using the scale they have here. So it's going to become a bitmap image in Godot, but you can scale it up or down to accommodate uh, for the size of your game. And this way you can use also um, version control friendly assets. So this is quite, quite good. And we're going to try this right now. 
so I don't need the shadow for this one. It's going to use uh, this one is going to be the character's shadow. It's going to be shared between all characters. And we're going to have character slash. Well, it's going to be the same as the player, except it's going to be NPC. Um, we have the arrows. The arrows should really go in a folder. Um, display. Yes, uh, Spine is a paid program. Well, wait for a bit for uh, Gilles to work on the animation tool in, tools in Godot and you won't need Spine anymore. Uh, Spine has one thing I don't like at all. It's... Um, it does not have a real graph editor and as someone who's studied in animation you do everything with the graph editor uh, every time it it solves a lot of problems even when i was using unity at some point we try working with spine so we use sprite at first then spine and um in the end we used unity's built-in animation tools and uh, a plugin uh, because um, because with Spine we uh, I didn't have the graph editor while in Unity I could move all the curves at the same time. Yeah, it's going to be for 3.1. Uh, the graph editor was planned at least I think for 3.1. Now the plans. Let's see. I hope they won't change. Okay, so display uh, or helpers. Yeah, I haven't worked too much with Dragon Bones. I, I know it has some limitations, but it's open source as well. Uh, the file format had some issues uh, with how they... You can't do some things because they encode data in a certain way. The, the motion and all. Um, okay, so helpers slash uh, direction. And we're going to add this to all... I shouldn't add it to the layer names, actually. I should really add it to the slices. Uh, I've got this bad habit from uh, Photoshop, because in Photoshop you use this to batch export sprites. All right, so let's grab all of you, create a slice. I had should have grouped everything. Uh, this, 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 play a shadow here, and environment slash pit, okay. So let me collapse everything this way here and I can see my slices. So uh, let's remove the old slices. I don't want the pebble like this. I don't want the sword, the porcupine, the rock and all. Uh, same for the life bar demo done. Let's see, all of this were done with it. This is done as well. Okay. So I'm going to quickly, quickly add helper slash direction to the arrows. I don't have a shortcut to rename and navigate the slices and layers, layer names. I think that'd be quite, uh, quite convenient. Uh, Okay, seems all right. Let's export all the slices. So now the good thing is I can go to the root of my project. And because I've written relative paths in all the export slices, um, I can press export. Uh, let's overwrite everything. And then if, if we go back in there, we have a, ah, I named it character. Okay, it's characters with an S. So let's fix this real quick and we'll be done. I have three layers like these. Uh, character, let me just see. NPC player, okay, I'm not deleting everything. That's too bad. Okay, export and we're done. Yeah, Affinity Designer is really good. Uh, the export 
system is excellent. But now we're going to work in Krita right after I modified all this. So the good thing when you have a, a good export uh, system, um, when you, you're careful with how you structure your project, is uh, you re-export everything and everything updates in the game. I exported as PNG, I wanted to use SVG. Let's see this. Uh, everything is PNG by default, I think. PNG 24, uh, SVG for... Which preset do we use? For web is probably going to be the smallest, no, not PDF. P SVG, SVG, where am I? SVG, flatten, no, for web. I guess that would be the, we don't use compression or anything. Export everything as curves. Um, hex colors, flatten transforms, view box, add line breaks, breaks, yeah. Okay, seems good. Can try now with everything as SVG. Let's see. Just want to see if uh, it respects the. It can respect the the shape of everything. Okay. Okay, so web export doesn't work. Let's do for export. It can't read them either. Um, doesn't seem to uh, manage to import them. The, the size, at least, isn't uh, isn't working for some reason. Okay, so if it doesn't work, uh, I'll try one last preset for now. With a different... Uh... Ah, sorry, I have to export everything. What? EPS? No, not... E Come on. SVG. For print. Okay. I doubt it'll work. No, it doesn't manage to import them, so I'll have um I'll have to look into that after the stream. Don't want to waste your time. So let's delete everything. SVG. Okay, and everything. EPS. Because I exported EPS files by mistake. Okay, I'm back, and everything is fine now. All right. Let's just change the character and the monster. I don't have the monster in this uh, project. Okay, characters, character scene. Select the character, player, body. Okay, I'm going to move you back, old brother. Okay, shift V moves the sprite relative to, to the pivot, interesting. Uh, and V to set the pivot to the mouse cursor. All right. Yeah, the advantage of simple graphics like these is how um, simple it is to... Uh, the, the symmetry works. You don't have to bother with the look direction and things like these. Okay, so we have the character's shadow, which is here. It's a bit larger okay does the job and that's about it we only have the uh, I think it's called gap yeah the, the gap scene to handle which is now called should be environment and pit 
All right, and it's roughly the same proportions. Seems to be working fine. And we'll move the we'll move the two of you down. So it's the origin is centered on the pit. Okay. Ah, Gilles says it's a it's a bug. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's the the exported SVG that's not uh, standard. I mean the SVG SVG specs are. Uh, I heard they are a bit messy. Okay, so now we've got to change the collision as well for the rock. I need two collision shapes instead of one because I've been smart and I've made it more complex than it needs to be. I like um, to be smart and do things like these. <laughs> okay, let's duplicate and make sure that the uh, resource is unique so we have a new collision shape. Okay, seems fine. Let's see. All right, we can try the game one time and we have our pro Ah, come on, this bug. I've tried uh, importing uh I've tried importing SVG and yes, it works. And see, uh, one thing, you know, using for example, I'm using Godot for the animation and look at this. It's great because everything works exactly like before. The animation of the character moving, because we're just working on the sprite position. Uh, it looks even cooler this way than with the previous graphics, doesn't it? Now I'll have to code the um, arrow directions and all. I'll do this uh, after the stream. But yeah. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> it feels a lot more fun this way. When the character's bumping, I should also juice the animation a little bit. I think that'll be for the juicing chapter, though. Uh, cool. So yeah, we can import a SVG now. Uh, I've done it once. It worked uh, for the. If you look at the presentation, um, the Godot presentation you have the logo as SVG inside. And actually, uh, I was talking about that uh, for the Kakemono design, that it would be an opportunity to fix the logo, but I actually did it now that I rem remember about it. So, oh, great. We have adult dating, go to sarah23.ga. Um, do we... Block the user directly, yeah. I guess, yeah. Let's block that. <clears throat> Alright. I'm starting to study Gurut soon. Is it still worth studying 2.1 or better to wait? Um, you can go to the new documentation straight away. So let me show you this because this is an interesting question. When you go to the docs.gurutengine.org, by default, it takes you to slash English slash stable, like this. Well, you have two ways to go to the latest docs. You can either go in the address bar and you change you change stable into latest, in which case you will get the work in progress documentation. Otherwise, you go back. So on the on the stable page, you go to down to V stable, you click. And then you have the latest version. So the, the way it works is stable. When a new stable version comes out, it updates to the, for example, when 3.0 comes out, it will update to 3.0. Um, while you can keep docs, for example, there will be 3.0 and 2.1 docs in parallel because um, you need to use Go to 2 to be able to export uh, OpenGL uh, ES2 compliant games that run on very old Android devices, etc. Okay, so we are done with this. We are done with Affinity Designer. It took 40 minutes to make all this. Um, 40, 45 minutes on stream. Now it's time to do something more exciting. Yay! 
<clears throat> I'm going to work on the character and um, I was looking to create so this is the one I made on stream the other day um, with a vector style here we have the character concept and here we have an, uh, a hybrid version I really like this character although it's going to be harder to animate um, I want to have a, a game concept that uh, and game graphics that work a bit better with this one. Um, let me go back to Godot and do one important thing. Thing I'm going to grab a screenshot with the proportions of the game. Yeah, I highly recommend uh, working with the with Godot three now because it's so much more convenient than Godot two. I mean all the uh, UI improvements really make a, a big difference when when it launches your game. <laughs> uh, let's see, by the way, I think I might be recording. No, it's okay. Because the problem is I have some shortcuts that... Um, similar shortcuts for recording videos and things like these. Let me see. I don't think I have syn sync uh, scene changes. I should definitely activate these options so one of the better things in Godot is the ability to do this <laughs> you can see on the left the uh, game screen updating when I move things and uh, hold on you can move the character and like mess up the game by moving the rocks around and the pit so you can try out the gameplay if you have a controller, it's even better because you can keep the focus on the editor. Just a quick tip while we're at it. You can keep the focus on the editor and you have the controller and it doesn't matter that um, you are focused on the editor with the mouse. You can still modify things and have um, your teammate playing on the side. And you can mess up the uh, collision engine by scaling everything, which you, you should never do. Uh, but yeah, for level design, excellent. Excellent. There are few engines that allow for this and that are as reactive as well. So I've done this with uh, HTML5 in the past. We would use a similar technique, uh, but there was a, a delay when you moved something. Um, was not uh, as good. Did I take the screenshot? I think I forgot. Ah, come on. This bug again. All right, so the reason is so I can have the proportions. Uh, I really can't wait. One thing that Krita is lacking is really precision tools for scaling. Um, having snapping, uh, they have a great uh, snap. The problem is it doesn't work with everything pixel and all. <laughs> So you have to do this, you have to zoom in and no, 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 not share. Just take this, place the element. I'm not even sure it snaps to pixels, it snaps to pixels. Um, or you have to enter, yeah, if I go there, ah, it's percentage based, so yeah. And let's apply the transform and there we are. Okay, so now we have the proportions for the characters. We're going to do one thing. Uh, we're going to do concept art, right? And so when you're doing concept art, you don't want to create final graphics. Graphics, So you don't care too much about the uh, documents, uh, the characters' resolution and all. I had scaled them up to make it a bit more comfortable for me to uh, draw them. One thing I'm going to do though uh, straight away is well I I'm going to upscale the document still which is going to make Krita probably run a bit slow but that'll do the trick. Uh, we don't need you anymore. So I Krita I like it because it, it has for one the, the developers try to do like many open source tools, uh, they try to work and build the, the tool with their own philosophy. Um, 
they, they try to improve, like they have limited uh, man hours and power to do this right now, but they're really trying to uh, improve on some things that other tools do differently for the needs, needs of um, uh, illustrators for now, mostly um, people who, painters in general, I'd say. <clears throat> and there are some really good things. Oh. The ability to use the Gimic uh, library, the some things like you have built-in stabilizer, assistance and all, which, for example, you don't have in Photoshop. Um, you have some very, very good things in there. Okay, so let's take all of you. Whoops, what am I missing? Yes, you. Let's take all four layers and we're going to scale you all. Crashed, yes. There is a stabilizer in Photoshop now. Uh, since the, okay, the, I, I don't use Photoshop since a few months. Uh, let's see. Because, yeah, they were looking to add it. And, um, no sound. There was video still. Uh, the encoder crashed. So, is the sound okay? Yeah, okay, so they, they just added it, I guess. Um, looking at the character, how it is on the prototype version, you can see that I find the um, vectorized rabbit, because I really wanted to have something like that, but I really find the vector rabbit uh, too, too blocky. Compared, I, I like him thin, actually. Maybe even a little smaller and a little thinner, like this. It's going to be hard to animate, but I think uh, it has some more personality. Because the ones at the bottom, they remind me a bit too much on, of um, mobile game creation. Not the biggest fan of that. Yeah. I prefer this design. I guess we're going to work with it. Um, okay, let's see. So yeah, well, even if um, <laughs> your sound crashed, <laughs> okay. Um, even if Photoshop has, you know, add some new tools, the by now the tool has often a lot more than you need. Um, so yeah, I'm more interested in a in a tool that's as efficient as possible for my needs at least. Okay, let's see how can I do this? I can have you multiply. Can't have you can I have you inherit here, but I can't have you Uh-huh. Okay, let's just pick a good painting brush, inking painting. It's been a while sun, since I last used Krita. Okay, there we go. And we're going to paint over the character's shape for this one. Just try to put some colors over it. Uh, did you try Paintstorm? Uh, so affordable, really good tool. Yeah, not not the biggest fan of Paintstorm. Um, same problem as most painting programs, including Krita. It lacks uh, good export tools. So for a game artist, not so great. Uh, okay, let's pick these colors back.
Okay, we have something. I would still like to have the demo here. So I can pick some colors. Maybe. So yeah, the idea is to see whether it'd be better to have uh, blocky shadows like these, or if I try to stay true to this um, more natural art style. Let's see. Because the thing is, uh, to work efficiently, that you, you need to do concept art because to work as efficiently as possible later, um, I'm going to have to create each sprite on one layer for now. Otherwise, it's too much of a pain to um, to export. I'd have to write scripts and all. So yeah, the idea is to um, try to define the art style and then stick to it. But something a bit painterly like this and being able to do some Krita live streams would be quite nice. Um. Okay, I'm gonna grab the face. I think some outlines will be more than welcome to help read the character. So that's something. I'm gonna pick uh, the old colors from that delicious JPEG image. Uh, this is not the best. Ah, uh, this one's too strong. Okay. Pure solid is not exceptional either. Let's see. So yeah, can you tell me as well if you like the streams this way? So some people wanted art streams. Um, some other people like go to live streams. <laughs> and um, uh, there was just one comment, but I think it was very relevant uh, from someone saying, yeah, if you're going to do a um, Godot live stream, don't jump between uh, Godot and Affinity Designer. Just if you're... I thought that that was really... Yeah, that's clearly better if you don't jump from one program to the next and you stick to programming in one case and on the um, other stream you do art so what do you think do you do you like it this way as well uh, let's take so you're going to be a stroke layer I'm starting to feel hungry. <laughs> I didn't take any... I forgot my meal today. <laughs> I'm going, still going to stream for, for some time. And then I'll go back... Uh, well, probably go back home today, for today. Uh, and keep working from home. What tool do you use to animate the character? It will be straight in Godot in the game engine. Yeah, okay, gonna work on the... Uh, I've got to work on the, the face a little bit. 
um, give it some more color and all, but I think this style is going to work well. Bandana, I think he'll be a bit sexier as well. Okay, now let's work on the face. So for the face, I think the original idea with the eyes is not too bad. Um, Large eyes that you could animate, if need be. So it's a lot easier to handle them this way, um, with just a dot for, for the pupils. But I think that wouldn't be too bad to... Uh, there's one thing I'd like in Krita as well is if the filter window could get out of the way somehow, like remember its position or something like this. Uh, because it always pops in the middle of the screen. Okay, seems to be doing the job so far. What do you think of this style? Add a bit of details to the eyes. I can't do it with the original style exactly. Those eyes make him feel like it's going to eat your soul. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's because um, the pupils are too small compared to compared to the eyes. So it needs something uh, bigger, but then I, I need to change everything around it. Hold on. Let me sloppily scale it. It always takes a bit of time before you can get uh, everything in place. One thing that's going to be hard to pull off is the, the mouth. 
But you have to, to think, like, even if I'm zooming in, um, this is the character. The, this is how it looks in-game, right? Uh, this kind of is the, the, the real size, so... You always have to keep this one in mind. Uh, but it does look a bit crazy. Not that uh, that's big issue for me. I don't like the mouth at all. Uh, it, I think it'll work better without it. Or something neutral. Like, meh. <laughs> like this. What do you say? <laughs> Oh, we need to have uh, some, some, yeah, definitely it's going to be better to work with a style like this one rather than vector. For one reason, it's it's a lot easier to be expressive and to do things like... <laughs> with the character who talks like, like that, hold on. We take you, we're going to rasterize you. And when the character talks, it goes... Hold on. Ah! <laughs> Excellent. Can make for some interesting uh now at least the the um the eyes make sense. <laughs> uh he's really ugly. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Okay, but let's go back to the character. Wow, had a bit, was a bit slow to update there. Starting to look a bit cuter, and I think for the mouth, just a, a small. Have to zoom in because it's it's a bit hard to uh, get right. But yeah, small, really small mark. Um, how about the uh, eyebrows colors? Hold on. Wrong shortcut. The values are okay. Um, I think for this outline, maybe this color is a bit better. Yeah, it's not saturated enough, but a bit more pink should be still be a bit better. Let's 
try just a bit of shade in there. Yeah, it's it's an issue I have uh, often because I don't draw enough. Um, it's um, um, getting the expression expression right. Uh, it's quite hard. I also like having the eyes uh, vertical like that. Gives more of a uh, Zelda the Wind Waker style. Now making run corridors being purchased. Uh, purchased. Ah, yeah. Um, being. Uh, how do you say in English? about the eye color as well. Wow, crash? Come on. Okay, Krita got stuck. Yeah, the, the brushes, uh, these are the brushes I make. They're on GitHub half of them uh, open source and the other half is a uh, part of a product a brush pack <laughs> okay I hope it's not going to crash too much and that we didn't lose too much uh, we did <laughs> okay that's fine Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I use a uh, paid program still. Uh, the crashes part, not the most fun. Recolor you now. <laughs> what color could we pick? Brown and golden is, is pretty cool as well. Just gotta pick the right colors. have made it look like Max from Sam and Max. Ah, yeah. <laughs> the private detect uh, detective? How are you? starting to look like something. So now let's look at the 
characters there. I wonder, so the next thing is, I wonder if I should use a painterly style like this, or uh, stick to a more stylized style like we have right now. So we have a bit of shade, just a little bit of it, not too much contrast. What do you say? Any thoughts on that? I think a bit more shade will make the character pop some more. Uh, the only issue is with uh, animation. You have to, to be careful with that. Because um, when you add proximity shadows, proximity shadow, um, it, as the limbs will rotate in the animation, it's not going to work too well in the end. Okay, I think it's cool right now, and we're missing the mouth again. That music, uh, you have the links to the music and all in the video description. Okay, so let's see the facial features, where they are, I just want to move them around the head. I like it this way as well. Do you think it's best with the, um, hold on, the pupil, the, ah, oh, come on, I forgot the word again. I think it's maybe a bit better this way, more expressive. It'll be a lot easier to animate as well. Ah, oh, yes, I need to select everything. Now, you can't use music from say Final Fantasy on stream. It's not going to, uh, to cut it. Yeah. Does the job to me, except for the overall contrast. So let's see now. Right, let's hide the other two versions and try to add some more contrast. So what was my uh, control shift F? No, shift F, yes. So starting with a bit of levels. Is it working? Okay, it's working, but it's slow. Yeah, with some more contrast, lighter on the light side. It's pretty nice. Let me see. It's a bit too violent here. Uh, but let's see with the curves, color adjustment. Yeah, okay, I need to use the lightness curve. It tends to make the colors look a little wrong. It desaturates them quite a lot. balance. It's kind of off.
Okay. Uh, I think there's too much contrast between the light skin color and the shadow color for the skin. Let's see. Let's. Bad weather incoming. <sighs> so... Um, yeah, let's see if I can fix the skin color here. I'm going to compress the, the range a little bit. better, a bit less like a zombie, maybe. But it messes up the, the filters, makes sense. Let's go back down there. Shadow is going too low as well. Okay, let's see with the uh, color selection tool what we can get. So this should be this one. Um, okay, pretty decent. Let's see if we can saturate you a bit more. Change the hue a little bit maybe. Lightness. Oh, come on, I did not click to, to confirm. Ah, have a nice time, uh, enjoy lunch. Yeah, I'm gonna leave soon as well, I guess. Welcome, Enrique. Yeah, it's a bit better with uh, less contrast on the skin color. Okay. Okay, fine by me. Starting to look like something. We add some... Uh, if we start to add some details, it'll look even... More like something. <laughs> By the way, do, I don't know if anyone else here is going to the Godot convention. Uh, we'll be meeting there's a Juan coming, so reduce the d lead developer, I guess. Uh, he's coming to um, he's coming to Brussels in February, so we'll be meeting there other people from the community, those who can come, um, and I'll be there as well. Uh, yes, I saw a question. Uh, yes, Krita has been stabilization. Why doesn't he erase it? It's weird. Yeah, 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 the character is starting to look like something. Starting to like the style. Okay, this is the color balance. Making it a bit more pink. Uh, so you're working on the green and all, okay. Um, this is the highlights, I guess. Some red in the highlights. Green, nope. A bit 
Lots of blue. Lots of yellow. Yeah. Yeah, pops clearly more, so some more color contrast can help as well. And you uh, are going to reset you. Lighter skin, darker stroke, and shadows. Okay, what do you say? Yes, Krita is a is uh, one of these open source programs that uh, it's already powerful. It has a lot of potential for for the future. Um, so it's one that, even though it still has some crashes and some. Um, some bugs and all that people complain about. Uh, it, it's it's really one of the open source programs to follow. Let's see with some more red lipstick on this bad boy. Uh, for painting, it's it's really very good. Just need some um, maybe deep purple in there around the eyes or don't yeah something along those lines okay we'll have a nice version of the character Maybe uh, the good thing is if we're using Guru's uh, built-in animation system, uh, it's um, okay. Let's remove this uh, bottle, something like this. Um, we we can swap the sprites, um, and the animation will still work. Okay, so with this, what time is it? Half past 12. Um, I'm just going to take 15 minute, minutes to uh, create other versions of the character. Just sketch it from the front view uh, and maybe the back view, okay? I'm gonna try to do it real fast because then I have other things to do and I wanna go back home when there's not too much traffic. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the front version will be quite sloppy at first. We're really sketching, okay? I'm mostly trying to... I'm looking at the uh, um, version of the character on the left, and I'm just trying to get the, the feature features to be about at the same height. Hey, the M shortcut doesn't... Oh, come on. Didn't do this. Uh, where's the mirror? Mirror, mirror, mirror. Canva canvas, mirror the view. Okay, why is the shortcut gone? Uh, mirror the view, and it's going to be M. Okay. 
Okay, it's maybe a bit hard to, to see for you, so let's fix this as well. Uh, I'll do it in white. Uh, white isn't great either. Black, but we're going to make the background a little lighter, please, because this is the default gray from Godot. There we go. Uh, questions? Um, yeah, you should always mirror sprites for cutout animation. Uh, so I showed this before with the sprites in Affinity at the start uh, of the stream. Um, for an eight direction character, you should really only make five versions. Top, down, uh, side, side up, side down. It looks a bit mean. Right now, I've not made it too angular. Uh, the um, <sighs> eyelids, I've not made them too angular, but maybe it would be better if they could follow the, the head a little more. The character shouldn't look too, too mean, too nasty. Um, Hey, hold on. What? Why did uh, it went back to? Didn't save the workspace as it, as it crashed, right? Okay. Let's center this again, and we'll go full canvas mode. So for the ears, how do we do this? Do we have them go in the back, or I think it'll be better if they go to the side, still. Stacked the same way. Same thing for uh, the bandana. It's best if it goes to to the side. For the body size, yeah, it's all right. Even if the character is seen from the front, you want to give it a bit of gesture, a little bit of style. Um, it's still slightly like the body. For example, the uh, right leg is in in the front, and the left leg is still in the back. The only thing is, right now, the version on the right is so stylized when it comes to the head, head shape. Uh, it's more like this, actually. It's got a flat side and it's rounded uh, on the forehead. And then it goes back down like that. Thinner for the eyes. Yeah, so at least you can't really cut it with uh, the various versions. You do have to make a few views for the characters. Um, Enrique is asking, hold on. Do you use... Hold on, do you use... Um, yeah, it's a, que a technical question about how you handle... Um, how do you say? Flipping the character animation in Godot, and yes, you do have to use either a transform 2D node or a node 2D that acts as a parent for most of the character's body, and you flip this one, you scale it negatively on the x-axis. Uh, it depends. It depends on the character rig, but in general, that's how you'll do it. A 
Okay, as far as the size, it's roughly the same. The body is a bit thicker, so I have to adapt it. Yeah, better. I think Lucas say a bit more expressive in the front version compared to this one. Let me see. I think it's because of how the eyes are, you know, rounded here. It looks more like a, a cat or some um, stupid animal like this. More like a psychopath. But if the eyes were to be, yeah, with wider eyebrows, it, it looks more normal. Yeah, see, I'm going to keep you, two of you, on top of the character here. All right. All right, so we have the front view. What time is it? 12.41, good. Just got time to do the uh, top. <clears throat> so for the top view, I'm going to do something pretty nasty. No, I want to select you. Hey, selecting. Okay, I can't, I have to control A, control V. Okay. Um, there we go. I'm going to flip the character around. Fix this, it's too wide on this side. Remove the facial expression. Okay, big cheat, but it works. <laughs> okay, you do want the ears to be like this, this one in front of the other. And there you go, you have a back version of the character, except you need uh, the neck in here. And the neck is covered by the bandana, uh, the, how do you call this? Is this a bandana still? Um, you cover the neck with some sprite because uh, it's one of the uh, connection points on a character when you animate it, that's going to cause you trouble. Okay. Okay, there we go. We have the back view of the character. Uh, here it's too messy. I'll see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure if I should show the uh, knot in the back. Cool. So we have the characters back, front. <coughs> now I don't need um, this as much. Let's see. There I go.
Okay, so these three quarter views are a bit, um, you, you can use the same cheat uh, for the three quarter. You grab the character, you're going to reuse some sprites. Um, there's no point in, uh, there's no point uh, starting from scratch. Yeah, okay, the, <laughs> the front view is really exaggerated on this side. No, uh, hold on, I want to be on this layer. Okay. Alright, let's work with this. So for the three quarter of you, you're going to keep um, as much as you can. You don't want to waste too much time if possible. Uh, so you can squash the, the eyes on the side a little bit. You can see already it, it looks three quarter. These are going to be a bit more on the side maybe, but um, yeah, you can move the, the chin line a little bit. Things like these. For the body, the main change you want to make is have one arm be in front, um, a rotate, you rotate it a little bit, Let's see, like this, you make the, the leg that was in front even more in front. You can see that you can really reuse the sprites uh, quite, quite well. And then you just adjust the front view, you make the ears feel a bit less to the side, a bit more hidden behind the body, but you can almost reuse the sprites as they are. In Krita you can do this as well, where you can um, rotate the sprites in space. Um, and you do ha always have to, to fix them a little bit, but... Yeah, you you overlap the sprites a little more in the front view and a little less in the three-quarter view. And there you go, you have a cheap three-quarter compared to front. Uh, same thing for the back three-quarter view. And it's not perfect, but it does the job. <laughs> So yeah, that was um, that was all I was looking to do for this stream. Uh, all right. Hey John. Ah, okay, we're well, pretty much done. We can call this a day. <laughs> um, yeah, a bit less than two hours. A fairly short stream compared to the usual. Yeah, you missed you missed the entire thing, but it's available for replay, so you can see the result at least. Uh, there's this, and we've done also. Did I close it? Yes, I closed it. Um, there was also the change for the art in Godot. Let me see. I've got to go back to the desktop. Godot. Yeah, as I was explaining, uh, I don't have anything to eat. 
today and um, the the bakery we have nearby is absolutely terrible um, and I have my meal prepped at home I just forgot to to take it on top of that I've got to pack some things I'm selling uh, this tablet and uh, some hardware uh, tomorrow some people coming from Switzerland for this so yeah we have uh, this now the demo with I'm going to add some um, more colorful background and will be good to um, use it for the course's next chapter. You're going to see this uh, land, it's coming uh, in a few as soon as possible. Uh, it, I'm making it longer than planned, but I'm going to record the first tutorial this afternoon. So, um, yeah, thank you all for joining. Um, there's more streams coming, more videos coming. And um, do you have any questions? Anyone? And here's the main character for the game. So it's Dan. It's going to look like this, roughly. I'm going to have to fix the front ver version, but um, yeah, aside from that, we ha kind of have the turnaround, just missing uh, one more frame. There'll be more art streams and more uh, programming streams on top of video tutorials. All right, seems there are no questions, so uh, he's sad. Uh, does he look sad? Probably a bit more robotic, I I'd say. Uh, I'll fix the... Uh, I'll give him, him more expressions later. All right. Have a nice day, everyone. And see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.